Hello and welcome to another episode of Risky Business. Uh, <coughs> one uh, right away here, let's just do um, one uh, Patreon shout out. I think I uh, forgot to mention uh, Louise, uh, that's uh, Risky5, you know, um, he uh, increased the part earlier this year as well. I don't know if I mentioned that, uh, but uh, shout outs to him, of course. I just wanted to get that out of the way right away. And then, uh, yeah, let's jump right back into this. So we are continuing uh, modeling. We've got uh, a high five unleashed connected to an expansion board here, which is pretty nice, I think. But uh, we need uh, we need a little bit more than that. So uh, we're gonna need a graphics card and a USB card before we can really get going here modeling the case. Um, I mean, I guess we could start on the the part of the case that'll connect up to the bottom of this stuff here, but. Uh, I think I just want to get the 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 cards into the model now uh, you know just get that out of the way right away so the thing that's interesting to consider about the cards is we want to have you know like we want uh, them to be secured in the case so the like here let me grab one of these here So if we look here, you know, uh, this, you know, this metal um, lip here, you know, this would normally, you know, you'd, you know, you'd screw this in to fasten it to your case in a, in a normal computer. And, uh, you know, we're going to want something like that, maybe something for this, you know, this bottom of it here to, to slot into as well, I think. Uh, and I don't know if that should be part of the bottom of the case or if we should have it be part of the, you know, like the top of it. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do that yet. But uh, so, I mean, we're going to want to have that kind of modeled so that we can, you know, reason about that more or less. Um, so I wonder, should I start by modeling the card itself or should I start by modeling the you know the the bracket the the metal bracket um hmm let me think hmm Where to begin? Well, I suppose let's start with the card and then we'll do the bracket. So for the card, you know, and again, we don't need to model it super, super accurately or anything, but, uh, yeah, let's uh let's start by uh let's do the like uh just a board and then we'll um you know extrude it by the board thickness and then we'll add a you know a transparent region on top of that to cover you know all of the stuff that kind of sticks out from the board. And then uh yeah, and uh, we'll add like a region extruded from the board, just like a, I, you know, we're not going to model the connector accurately or anything, but we'll, you know, do an extrusion to kind of roughly model where the connector is, you know, and then uh, once we've got that, I think we'll uh, go ahead and add a, you know, 
a model of the actual connector on the board you know again just a rough model not an accurate model and uh, then we'll we'll slot it in to the model we've got right now and then um yeah and then we'll uh go back to just looking at the main model of the card and uh well we'll start a new model for the bracket we'll model the bracket and then we'll add it to the model of the card and then you know that'll automatically update the the final model as well because it'll be using the the module for the card i think that's the way to go so with that said let's uh let's jump into it here so let me get my calipers or maybe i should use oh yeah i need my my ruler my ruler's been moved i need to get my ruler i will just go get that quickly I've never explicitly mentioned it, but I don't know if uh, you've noticed here, but my girlfriend uh, sent this to me quite a while back as like a gift. She uh, made a little poster out of the the logo that Miblo made. I think that's pretty awesome. So <laughs> we've got a little risky business poster back there. That's a one of a kind as of right now. Oh, and also I should mention while I'm at it here, um, for Handmade Seattle, uh, there are going to be bookmarks that I'm going to be giving out at my booth. I have them now, I can show you. So just a, you know, just a little teaser here. Uh, if you stop by my booth at Handmade Seattle, you can get one of these nice little risky business bookmarks. Here's the back side of it. Let me switch to the other scene um, so you can see it a little better here. Oh, I just realized I'm... Oh no, this is the right scene, never mind. Okay, yeah. Let me see if I can... Uh... So you're probably not going to be able to see it too well on the webcam. The webcam quality is not that good. But basically, all this stuff over here, this is the table from the RISC-V spec of the instruction encoding of the RV32i instruction set. And then down here are the registers. You know, it has the X0 through X31. And then the ABI name for those registers, the description of what they're for, and who is responsible for saving them in the ABI. So, you know, the instruction coding for all the base RV32i instructions and your registers. You know, a nice little quick reference. It's a little bit smaller than, <laughs> you know, because it's a bookmark. It's smaller than I would want to, to personally use as a reference, I think, with my eyesight. But uh, if you have good eyesight, uh, the, it turned out really good. The text is crisp and everything, you know, it's very readable. So, you know, if you're writing like an assembler or something, or, you know, just the base uh, RISC-V, you know, RV32i, this has practically everything you need on it, honestly. Um, the only thing would be the fence instruction, the details of how, you know, the details of the FM or FN or whatever it is. Yeah, FM, pred and successor fields of the, the fence instruction are not detailed. 
on this card, but uh, you know, it is listed there on the the table. But you know, and then you know, there's plenty of you know details of like what you'd actually want in a real assembler and things like that if you were to implement one or something. But you know, I mean, this is a, you know a lot of useful a lot of useful information on there on a little quick reference. So I think that's pretty pretty cool that I was able to fit that on a, on a bookmark. And then you know the other side, it's just like information if you want to you know hire me or something like that. Or if you want to support the show, uh, let me show that here. That's the back side. So yeah, they turned out pretty nice. I'm very happy with this with this bookmark. I thought it would be very fitting to do a bookmark instead of a, a business card. Uh, since I do the book club on the show, you know, it seems very fitting to have a risky business bookmark. Uh, I started by doing a test run. I did a small test run of these where both sides are just the, you know, the front of the card, a couple different variants. And then based on how that turned out, I did the final, final run. So uh, I should have enough to give to everyone at the, at the conference. I, I did a, a full run of like 500 of these cards. So, you know, of these bookmarks. So I'm very happy with how that turned out, and I'm looking forward to giving those out at the conference. Just thought I'd mention that. Okay, now let's get back to modeling here. Okay, so how big is this board? We're starting with the USB card. And it looks like, you know, 85 millimeter by by 52, I think 85 by 52 looks reasonable to me. So let's just start with that. I do kind of want to consider cleaning up some of this code where I've done like, you know, linear extruding a square. Maybe we should switch those to be cubes. I think that'll be cleaner to use cubes and stuff like that. Hmm, maybe we should do that first. Well, here, uh, let me, before I forget, USB width equals 85, USB height, equals, or not high depth. Equals, what did I say? 52, I think. Sounds right. Okay. And then we're going to need height as well, of course. But I don't know what that'll be yet. Okay, so with those jotted down, let's take a moment here and just do a little bit of fiddling around with the code we've already got. So, so yeah, I think I'm going to take all of the EXB, the expansion board variables, 
you know, and put them in the expansion board module just to scope those a little bit tighter. And then uh, same with the High Five Unleashed. So I think that looks pretty good. And then eventually we'll do the same thing with the USB card and everything else. So let's make sure this still works. Uh, syntax error. Uh, oh, because of this, of course. Okay, yeah, so it still works. That's good. Um, now I'm just thinking about cleaning some of this up a little bit. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, if we do a cube, the thing is you know, it changes, we'd have to rethink, because like when we linear extrude, right, we're starting with the square on the, like the X, the X, Y plane, you know, just flat, and then we're extruding up. But if we turn it into a cube, uh, we'd have to rethink how we do it a little bit because it would be centered, you know, unless we don't center it, but then, then it's from a corner, which is even, even, you know, <laughs> farther off than what we have here. Uh, if we uh, if we do it as a cube, uh, instead, of, instead of linear extruding up by 26.5 in this example, we would have to like, um, you know, I mean, we'd set the height to be 26.5, but then we'd have to uh, do a translate. We'd have to translate it. So, I guess instead of being exp standoffs plus exp height uh, that we are currently translating it by, we'd also have to translate it up by half of the half of the board height or something like that. You know, um, half of the the height we extruded by. I mean, like I don't know if we want to go through all this code and change things like that. Let's just leave it as it is, even if it's not the cleanest, you know. I think I'll put this up on the, the GitHub to, you know, the public uh, for everybody to access since I'm doing it on the show. This will go, go, go up on there soon enough. But uh, for now, let's turn this stuff off. Okay, now we're going to start a new model here. So we're going to uh, just do, let's see, we're going to do a square. Just going to do it the same way I've been doing everything. Okay, so we're going to do USB with USB depth. And let's see, do we need to say center equals true? Yes, we do. Center equals true. And um, yeah, then we're going to linear extrude. Oh, that's another thing. I think. Uh, by default, the way Vim wants to format this, uh, I don't know. The formatting, the auto formatting doesn't seem super consistent, but whatever. Don't really care. Okay, so for the heights, we're going to need to figure out how much we want that to go by. 
So, you know, do do. So, here, let's just turn that off for now and take a look at our. Okay, what's the problem now? Oh, does it not? I think it doesn't support nested nested comments. Okay, yeah. So this is going to be our USB board. Now let's see. Grab the calipers here. Let's see how thick this this board is. Mm, 1.75 perhaps. Two, maybe two. One point, ah. Uh, I think it's like 1.75. Let's call it Okay, now So now we're going to want to do a copy of the square And we're going to do a linear extrude on it by however much we want to, you know, go up by. And we're going to do a translate. So we're going to do zero, zero, and then uh, USB height. Now, how much do we want to linear extrude by? I'd say the highest thing is like the the Molex connector for, for if you need additional power to it.
That's like 11. I call it 11 millimeters. Ten point five. Let's call it ten point five, and that's with the the board heights. So we need to subtract that. Let's double check that measurement with the ruler, if we can. I'd have to eyeball it a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I might not be able to really get a good measurement with the ruler. Looks like, I don't know, just eyeballing it here. Kind of looks like it's around nine. Around nine millimeters. So we don't need to be super accurate this with this measurement, so let's just go up by 9 millimeters. I was saying like, I don't know, 10.5 to 11. The board height is 1.75. So that's in the right, you know, right ballpark. Let's make that transparent. Okay, looking good. Now let's um, let's add the area where the PCI Express X1 connector goes. So I think this we should measure with the ruler. Okay. So from the edge of the connector to the edge of the board, we're looking at two, so 20, 20 millimeters. The connector itself another 20 millimeters and then the height of it one point something so or you know 10 point 10 11 maybe like 12 or something let's try with the calipers for that measurements
I'd say 13. So maybe 20 by 13. So let's grab this and then make this uh, 20 and this 13 and then we're going to translate it into place. We said it needs to be 20 from the board. The right hand side of the connector is 20 away. Okay, so first of all, if we translate it, let me think here. So USB width divided by two minus 20, I think. And then on the y-axis, USB depth divided by two, height zero. Something like that. Okay, so first of all, few problems here. Uh, well, wait. Am I? Yeah, I'm oriented correctly. So I went the wrong way on the y axis. Can correct that pretty easily. Second thing. Uh, because this is centered, I need to go down further. So, six point five, I guess. Oh, wrong direction. Like that. And then the other thing is I copied and pasted the wrong thing. I want the one that goes by the height, like that. Okay, now is this correct though? That can't be right. Right? Okay, that's why. Yeah, because it's centered. So because it's centered, uh, we need to subtract half of the width and then we need to subtract the full width. So in total, go over by 30. Yeah, so this is correct now. This is where it's actually supposed to be. And this is, you know, this part of the connector right here. You know, it's it has a notch in it and, you know, it has like rounded edges and stuff on the inside there, but uh, and then there's the, you know, the other little tab over here. We're not modeling those details, right? We're just, you know, getting this rough area marked off. And I think we've done a, a decent job at that.
So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that should be pretty accurate. Let me double check with the calipers just to make sure it's 20. I believe it should be. Yeah, that looks pretty accurate to me. So I think I'm pretty happy with this now for the model of this card. And uh, the next thing to do would be the bracket which goes over you know over here but uh first let's um let's make some space on it in our existing model we're going to need to put that on the expansion board so let's put this into a module so i'm going to say module USB Okay now, so here's our existing model. It's all looking pretty good. And we are going to be slotting that in somewhere over here. So let me um, we're just going to do a rough eyeballing and then we're going to you know, cut out space in the, the expansion board and uh, model a connector and then slot it in, same as we did for the the High Five Unleashed. Okay, so to translate it, let's start by just having it go up a bunch. Or wait, uh, on the Z axis. Uh, even higher. Let's go even, even higher. Okay, now we need to uh, rotate it. So what was the command for that again? Rotate. Okay, simple enough. So let's see here. We're gonna we're gonna wanna do rotate A equals Now, what do we want to rotate by? Um, let's see here. We want to rotate. Uh, 
on the let me think here the z axis by is it counterclockwise by default so 90 yeah and then we're going to want to rotate on the the y axis by negative 90. No. <laughs> no, that's not what I what I wanted. I'm confused though. Why did that See, that's like uh, rotating it this way. Isn't that the x-axis that it's rotating on? Maybe I'm misunderstanding their conventions here. In my mind, that would be an x-axis rotation right because you're you're rotating about a line here which is the x-axis right it rotated up like this but they're calling that a y-axis rotation So So we want a rotation like that on the x axis. I don't know if I agree with <laughs> Their, uh, their notation on what, what axis you're rotating by, but okay. I wonder, can we see documentation for this stuff? Maybe I'm just being stupid. It says it rotates a degrees about the axes of the coordinate system. Or around an arbitrary axis. Oh, I guess what I'm doing here by specifying A, I'm specifying the axis of rotation or something. I think what I was thinking of 
is something more like this, where you specify the axis of rotation. So what I wanted to do was say like v equals uh, y, and then a equals negative 90 or something. I don't know. There, I, I find this API a little bit confusing. Rotation rule help. For the case of rotate ABC, A is rotation about the X axis from the plus Y axis toward the plus Z axis. B is rotation about the Y axis from the plus Z axis toward the plus X axis. C is a rotation about the z-axis from the plus x-axis towards the plus y-axis. Right hand rule. Point your right thumb along the positive axis. Your fingers show the direction of rotation. Okay, so that's the, the rule they're using. So if we think about that, so when we say rotate along the y-axis, what they mean is point your thumb along the y-axis. The, the way your hands curl is the, the direction of, of rotation, right? Is that right? So... So even though I, I, you know, figured it out from trial and error, I'm going to go back here because isn't that what I want? The Y axis, right? Like if the thumb is along the Y, right, the direction that my fingers curl would, you know, like a 90 degree on the, on the Y axis would do what I'm trying to do, would it not? So why am I having to rotate on the X? Oh, I guess it's because I did the Z first and it goes in order. It does the X, the Y, and then the Z, right? So the proper way to think about this, <laughs> that's, that's where my confusion is stemming from, that I did the Z first, basically. So if we start, you're right, it starts like this. So first thing we do is a rotation along the x-axis, which means if I do a, a 90 degree, right, that's going to line it up correctly, right? So we start by doing this, right, 90 degrees on x. And then we do y. So in this case, we don't want to do a rotation on Y, uh, but for Z, we do want to do a rotation on Z. And uh, yeah, we're gonna wanna do a another 90 degree, right? So let's do a, okay. So it's really just the order of evaluation that was confusing me. Uh, it was doing <laughs> what I was imagining in my head. I just had the order of operations wrong. That's that's where my confusion stemmed from there. Okay, so now we've got the you know the card lined up here, uh, and yeah, it's gonna be you know it's gonna be somewhere like I don't know somewhere over here. And somewhere back, you know, it's sort of like that. That's not a very, not a very good, 
uh, you know, not very lined up for sure, but uh, you get the idea. Right, something like this basically is where it's going to slot into. Now we're going to need to figure out where exactly it slots into. So, where would that be? Here, let me uh, disconnect the High Five Unleashed from the expansion board for now. Okay, now let's take a look here. Where is my PCI Express slot? The X1 slot. So from the right hand side of the board, okay, let me see. We're looking at it in our model, we are looking at it like this. So from the left hand side of the board, mm, I'd say 80, 80 millimeters from the left hand side to the edge there. Twenty something for this edge. Maybe like, I don't know, twenty nine. or something. Let's try the calipers. So I'll just set it to 29. Mm, no, it's less than that. Set it to uh, 28. That seems reasonably close. Now let's go with 28. I think 80 by 28. Let me note that down before we forget. So let's go back up to the expansion board. Okay, and uh, so those measurements are from the left, the top left of the expansion board in our model. So we're going to want to go to the right by 80 millimeters and down by 28 millimeters. And then we're going to want to put in a connector and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So let's start just by getting the positioning roughly. So Uh, 
I'll do a cube and we'll need the dimensions for this. But then we're going to translate We're going to translate our cube. And cubes, cubes are centered, right, by default. I'm never Maybe I'm just never <laughs> working with them. Maybe I'm always working with them from the corner. I don't remember. Let me um We're just going to make a cube here quickly to remind ourselves how it works. Uh, what's my syntax error? Okay, yeah, so it does not center by default. It goes by the the uh, bottom bottom left corner. So I tend to be working with the cubes like that. So I guess I'll just go with that to be consistent with my existing code. It's not a huge deal. I might clean all this stuff up later, but uh, it's more important that we, you know, do important work rather than just, you know, cleaning stuff up, refactoring the code that uh, that doesn't actually get anything meaningful done. So we're not going to worry about it. Time is of the essence. So uh, let's see here. First thing we're going to need to do is get it relative to, for now I'll just do 42, 42, 42. Okay, now, so this is going to be something, you know, 80. something plus or minus 80, something plus or minus 28. Okay, now how high does it need to be? I believe it needs to be uh, standoffs plus board height, right? So let's just turn on the expansion board. Okay. Now that looks correct, I think. Obviously it's not in the right place, but uh, we will get that sorted out. So. So both of those are going to be, or no, this one is going to be minus, right?
Or wait. Well, I want to... See, the 80 and the 20 are measured from the, the top left rather than the bottom left. So the left part of it, the 80, should be fine. Uh, but the top, we're going to need to go by however however tall we make it. Um, So like if I just say 42, okay, let me think. EXP depth. Divided by 2, minus 42, is that right? Yeah. And then from there, we say like minus 28. Yeah, so that is the kind of translation I want to do. But then, uh, of course, it needs to be, you know, from the left hand side. So to do that, we're going to do exp width divided by 2 minus the 80. Or no. Oh, yeah, that needs to be negative. And then that's going to be plus. Yeah. Okay. Now we need to actually, you know, get the correct dimensions for this thing. So let's take a moment and figure that out. So let's use the calipers here. Twenty five millimeters high. And around nine I guess more like eight point seven, eight point seven five. So let's say 8.75. What did I say for the other dimension? 25? Let me double check that. I forgot. I think I said 25, right? Yeah, 25. 25 by 8.75. And then the height 
Let me write these down and then I'll do the height. Okay, now this we need to update. Oh wait, did I? Yeah, I've got those backwards. This one should be 25. This one, 8.75. Okay, and then, uh, let's see here. We're going to have uh, how how high is it? So it's going to be a hard measurement to make. Let me try with my ruler. So that gives me about nine millimeters, but uh, that's not the correct measurement because, you know, the bottom of the ruler does not, like the the first mark is, you know, not at flush with the bottom of the ruler. So we're going to need to try to correct for that. I think there's about two two millimeters before the you know before the first mark. So let's say let's call it like seven seven millimeters. 
again, this measurement doesn't need to be super, super ag accurate. Uh, So this is roughly the connector. And we'll need to be a little bit particular about where we cut it out because it's uh, it's kind of a thick connector compared to, you know, what you actually slot into it. Uh, and it's not exactly centered either, I think. So we're going to want to try to, you know, get that a little bit more accurate in terms of where we place the the cutout. But first, uh, let's just cut out, you know, a region from this transparent block here. So, which is that? Is it this? No. Must be this one. Yes. Okay, so we're just going to cut a cube. So we're going to want to go AXP depth plus two width. Um, how wide did we make this thing? 8.75, right? Or whatever. Yeah, 8.75. Let's just make this thing, this cutout, like, I don't know, 12. And then height, so looks like 26.6 .6 or so, seems to be what I'm doing in the other cutouts. Now we're going to need to translate that. So where are we going to translate that to? It's going to be negative expansion board width over 2 plus and then um, let's just go back a bit. So let's say, I don't know, 77. Depth. Um, Uh, let me see here. If we're mimicking the other one we already did, it would be like this.
Oh, whoops. Yeah, okay, now let's uh, just move it until it looks good. This doesn't need to be super accurate or anything. Let's just make it a little, little wider, I think. So yeah, I don't know, something like that. That looks pretty decent, right? So this gives us room to put in a card, basically. Now, now we can kind of get it closer to where it should be. Okay, so you can see now it's getting lined up relatively close to where it's gonna need to gonna need to slot in. We might need to adjust our cutout a little bit, but uh, we'll do that when we've slotted it in. So first, we're gonna need to figure out where where exactly the you know, the cutout for this connector needs to go, and then we can more precisely position things. So, let's take a look at where that needs to go. So I would say four millimeters, four millimeters in from the left. Well, maybe three, three or four. Three to four millimeters in from the left. and maybe like two millimeters down from the top. Let me try with my calipers. I don't know, let's call it, uh, it's maybe more like two point, three, I mean, let's call it three from the side. Yeah, 
and two, two from the top. Now we're going to do another difference. Okay, now, so, the USB connector is 20 by 13, so 20 and the 1.75 is what we care about. I think, yeah. Yeah, the 20 and the make the connector a little bit bigger. But let's start with this. And then uh, height. Uh, let's see here. How how oh, high, say eight. Right. Okay, but now positioning it. Did I not note down? I, I think I didn't note down <laughs> my measurements. I said it was two by three, right? So three Yeah, and then two
So like there. So maybe we just want to leave it like that. In reality, it's more like It's more like two millimeters from the right side. It's farther on the right than it is on the left. Um, but it's a thick, you know, it's a thick connector. Like it's thicker than the, the board in reality. Yeah, maybe we want to model it. I feel like I'd rather... Yeah, I feel like I'd rather just have it two millimeters from the right-hand side, basically. So... So if we do 80 plus, I think I said I made it 8.75, right? No. Or well, that minus 1.75, so 87 basically. Yeah, and then let's go back two millimeters to put it at 85. So yeah, over there. That is how I'm going to model this connector. You know, it's a pretty rough model, but uh, I think that will do. So now, um, let's see if we can't get this lined up here. So first of all, That looks right to me. Okay, so this is going to go Let's say like uh, a little bit more, a little bit more. That's too much. Okay, I think that's lined up. Now let's start lowering it. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's flush at 66. Okay, and then how deep is this thing? I made it eight. So let's just say six or seven. Yeah, so Does it really stick up that much? See how it looks at 59. So yeah, I think we're going to go with something about like that. We'll check it out. You know, we'll see how it actually compares in the real world. But um, first, let me make this, you know, let me adjust this um, cutout to accommodate the card a little bit better. Okay, which one was that? Uh, not this one. It must be this one. No. Oh, this one right here. Okay. Okay, that looks decent, I think. Something like that, I do believe. Okay, now let me compare with reality. So let's actually, you know, put this this in here. Let's see, it goes this way. Okay, so I might have it backwards actually. So this is how it actually sits in reality. Let me make space. So yeah, our model is backwards. So we need to flip it. So is that a Z axis rotation? Yes, it is. So we don't need to 
worry about order of operations. Okay, so we have flipped the card. Now we need to line it up again. This is a good opportunity to see kind of you know how deep we're putting it in putting it in there. That kind of looks like it might be an illusion. It kind of looks like it's all the way down. I thought it uh, wasn't that far down. Yeah, we maybe want it up more like that, a little bit higher up. Okay, now let me see here. So Yeah, that's still off. It might need to be by a fraction. Yeah, I think it's going to need to be not an integer integer multiple, but let's slide it over here. Okay, and I am going to have to end it here. I think it needs to be like that. I might turn off some of this model so we can see it easier. Uh, Okay, well,
Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, and then let's just correct, you know, quickly correct some of this other stuff. The, the cutouts. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty nice, I think. And in the next episode, we will compare that with real-world measurements, make any corrections, and uh, then go on to the graphics card. And then, uh, then we can do the case. So, uh, thank you for, for watching this episode on the archive. And uh, if you want to follow the series live, you can do so at twitch.risky.tv in the future. Uh, these episodes are not live because it's handmade Seattle prep, but uh, in the unforeseen, you know, I, you know, um, I don't know when, but uh, sometime in the future, I'll be streaming live again. And, you know, if you want to catch those, they're going to be on twitch.risky.tv. And uh, you can always catch episodes on the YouTube archive at uh, risky.tv. And if you want to get updates about the series, you can do so at Twitter uh, at HMN underscore risky on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I did uh, my Patreon shout outs right away at the beginning. Like I say, shout outs to Louise for increased support. And uh, if you want to support the series, you can do so at... Uh, uh, patreon.risky.tv and uh, with that said I will see you in the next episode and stay risky everyone <laughs>